Sanctuary of the Covenant today, who packaged in plaza, and there's a rising flag. It's a great day for the village, and I just want to thank everyone for being here. I don't think we could have had a better day weather-wise. First, I'd like to give a special thanks to Bob Health and Mayor McDermott, who started this project about four years ago. We started the monument. And now we've completed it with the walkway. So I want to thank Bobby and uh, Mayor McCormick for the rest. I want to thank uh, Deputy Clerk Jeannie Flood, I'm not Jeannie Flood, Jeannie Perkle in the office. I know this person. But Jeannie's done a terrific job with this. This has been a very uh, stressful two weeks to make sure everybody's names were right, to try to get everything together. But if everyone could give Jeannie Perkle a big hand, I appreciate it. This time I'd like to introduce the village board. I have Deputy Mayor Tom Sepp, Trustee Pat Fawcett, Trustee Mike Dobsovich, and Trustee Mary Delvecchio. I'd like to thank also two past mayors for coming today, Mayor Charlie Hughes and Mayor Joseph McNulty. Other elected officials that are here today are Councilman uh, John Cochran. Can you guys hear me? Am I bouncing in and out? You're okay? All right. John Cochran and County Legislator Steve Flattery. Both those, both those gentlemen are uh, residents of the village. At this time, I'd like to have everybody stand, please. As we post the colors, followed by the national anthem sung by Deidre and Kelly Carmichael, and the Pledge of Allegiance by Two Thirty Three. So everyone, please stand. Post the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, 
with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Post dismissed. Thank you. Please be seated. Our first speaker today is Chet Triplett. Chet is a graduate of Bayshore High School, class of 1969. He entered into the U.S. service in 1971, serving through the Vietnam conflict stateside, assigned to the 9th Air Force Tactical Command as a law enforcement specialist. To complete his Remaining enlistment with the United States Air Force Reserve, the Air National Guard, and Chet was received an honorable discharge in 1997. Chet has served for over 40 years on the American Legion Post 365, located in Bayshore, past commander, and currently as the chaplain. Chet is currently working on the Bayshore Hall of Fame Committee for Veterans Wall for the Veterans Wall of Fame and the High School Lobby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What a wonderful day. Beautiful weather. And all you people out there, I know you smile behind those masks. You know, I can't see it, but you are. It's certainly an honor and a privilege to be here today. Be able to speak at this dedication of this walkway. This walkway is just one way of us saying to all our veterans, thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your dedication, for your honor, for your sacrifice, and for the freedom that you gave to us. On this walkway, there are two bricks. There are many bricks, but two of them belong to members of my family. One is my father, and one is my father. They both were World War II veterans, combat veterans. And today, I have members of my family here, my lovely wife Anne, and my daughter Kellyanne, and my grandson Gavin. What is the significance of Gavin? A lot. He would be their great grandson. So here he is, able to witness, and to be a witness to this great ceremony, and to their dedication. They're no longer with us, but they'll always be with us in our heart and spirit. It's so important for us to remember that. And our veterans have given so much to so many for so long. And we can't forget that. We also have Veterans Day coming up this Wednesday. And as we all know, that's the day that we take time out to thank all our veterans. And it's very, very important that we do that. The other thing that I was going to say today was that it's so important to me to be here with all of you, with all of my fellow veterans, okay, and the mayor, and all the people here in Bright Waters for this special occasion where we dedicate this walkway. I have been a resident oh, since I moved out of the Bronx, I guess for 50 some odd years, in the Bayshore of Bright Waters area. And I've always been committed to working with my community in every way that I can. And this is just one way I've seen that happen. And from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you to everybody who was on this committee, who worked so hard. And Jeannie Perkle, you worked really hard, I have to tell you. You're a worker and you're a doer. Okay, Mr. Mayor, you got a good girl there. But just by saying this, it makes me proud to be here today, to be with you. So I just want to say to all of you, thank you, God bless all of you, and God bless America. Thank you, Chuck. Next gentleman is 
Brigadier General John DiGilio. General DiGilio served 32 years in the U.S. Army on active duty and with reserve components, retiring in 1999. He has been awarded over 24 decorations and distinctions. Some of those are the Legend of Merit, Bronze Star, the Army, Army Commendation Medals, the Victoria Service Medals, the Victoria Citation Medals, and the Vietnam Cross Gallantry with the Palm. The General has served in Vietnam from 1970 to 71. In addition, he is a member of the New York Army Guard, or Army National Guard, to be introduced to the upstairs. In addition, he is the first member of the New York Army National Guard to be introduced to the Order of Military Medical Merit. John is also a consultant in hospital administration for the New York Department of Health. He is a leadership position in hospitals, skilled nursing homes, and ambulatory facilities. He has held faculty positions at Columbia, St. Francis, St. Joseph's, and also St. George Medical School in Grenada. He is also a Bayshore High School graduate, 1962. He's also a member of the Bayshore High School Hall of Fame. Please welcome Brigadier General John DiGilio. Good morning. We have a long time. Mr. Mayor, happy conference other elected officials, friends and veterans, and most importantly, all veterans present. Regardless about how one feels about policies that lead to war, let there be no doubt that veterans serve with honor. They serve to make life better for others. They preserve our freedom. Not all veterans have seen war, but a common bond that they share is an oath in which they express their willingness to die defending the nation from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Perhaps most significant in preserving our way of life are the battles that America does not have to fight because those who wish us harm slink away in the fear of the might of the American military. To quote Eric Arthur Blair, more commonly known by his mom, the plume, George Orwell, we sleep soundly in our beds because rough men stand ready in the night to visit violence on those who would do us harm. We can be secure at home because we have brave warriors protecting us on land, in the air, and at sea. Those of us gathered here today have indicated our support to the outstanding men and women who have served our country. To veterans, we are their friends, their family, their co-workers, and their neighbors. It is up to us to ensure that every veteran feels that his or her service to this country is appreciated by their fellow Americans. There are many tangible ways that we can acknowledge their sacrifice. But the easiest is to simply say, thank you for what you have done for our country. And if the veteran has made the supreme sacrifice, remember the price that has been paid for our freedom and offer your support to the loved ones left behind. Remember how occasions like this start on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, November 11th, 1918, the gun stopped. It was a moment to be celebrated as the largest and deadliest war up until that time came to a merciful end. We still celebrate that moment, only we call it Veterans Day. War is never anything to celebrate, but peace is. The peace in between these horrific wars is brought to you mainly by our veterans. We honor our fallen on Memorial Day although every day we should remember them. Today we honor all who have served. While many veterans are humble, there is no such thing as insignificant military service. What we are doing here today is an important and symbolic way of remembering and saying thanks. 
we should be dedicated to remembering the legacy of all veterans, because what these men and women have done for us matters to America. It matters to the people overseas who are liberated from tyranny due to the sacrifices of our military members. From defeating communism, fascism, and imperialism, to keeping the peace during the Cold War and battling terrorism today, veterans have accomplished remarkable things throughout our nation's history, such as then Captain, now Dr. Larry Rosen, Bayshore High School Class of 64. As a medevac helicopter pilot for the 101st Airborne Division, he and his crew evacuated 25 wounded soldiers from the fire support base ripcord as it was being overrun by the North Vietnamese Army. He went in and out of that hot landing zone the same way five times because the base was surrounded by the NVA on three sides. They pulled out five critically wounded soldiers each time. On the last time, an NVA soldier shot up the front of his chopper with an AK-47, wounding his co-pilot and killing his crew team. Yes, there were red crosses on that chopper, but that did not matter to the NVA. Their hit heroism made it possible for 25 soldiers to live and produce subsequent generations. Despite the sacrifices that nearly all veterans have made and the horrors that some have experienced, the overwhelming majority and proud and are proud to have served. 19th century British philosopher John Stuart Mill summed up the necessity of a special group of people when he wrote, War is an ugly thing, but not the ugliest of things. The decayed state of moral and patriotic feeling, which thinks that nothing is worth war, is much worse. The person who has nothing for which he is willing to fight, nothing which is important than his own personal safety, is a miserable creature and has no chance of being free unless made and kept so by the exertions of better men than himself. Fortunately for all of us, America has been blessed throughout its history by many such men and women, its veterans, Mr. Mayor and the Village of Brightwaters. We thank you for the memorial and what it represents. May God bless America and may God bless our veterans. Thank you.
Thank you, Steve. Our next speaker is Captain John Cochran. John Cochran is a Bayshore graduate, 1978. He's a lifelong resident of the village of Brightwater. He's married and has two children. John served in the Navy and the Navy Reserves for over 30 years. He's currently the town of Islip Councilman, past president of the Bayshore Lions Club, and is very active in the Boy Scouts and in many veterans groups. Captain John Cochran. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Gene. I want to also thank uh, Bob Holtz and Mayor McDermott uh, for this, their vision to have this forward. It's hard for me as a Navy captain to follow a general. So you got to bear with me. But can I have a raise of hand all the veterans in the audience? Thank you. Look around. These are the men and women that serve this great nation. And this memorial, for me, means each one of those scripts that has a name on it has a story. So my section, the Cochran section, kind of north on the side of the sidewalk, you'll see a lonely cook. That's my grandma. She was in one of the first 600 women in the United States Navy to serve. And, and she, uh, when she was uh, retired after World War I, she was the first woman YNC, which is the first Navy guy, the chief. So I'm proud to have a chief in our, my family background. Next to her brick is Jim Cochran. Jim Cochran served as a steward in World War I on a troop ship. Uncle Jim could make the best blueberry muffins, it was, you know. He used to live on the castle. He tells stories about going back and forth uh, to the Packer or France delivering the soldiers. Um, my father's script, which means a lot to me, which I follow footsteps. He, um, surface warfare officer, he served on the Melville, so he was loved to be called the King Sand Sailor, and he was on the aircraft carrier and Peter. And he loved telling the story. They were in the Mediterranean doing an unrep with the destroyer, and two redheaded guys on the bridge up from the destroyer yelling for Cochran on the bridge of the a carrier, and the commanding officer of the carrier is like, who are these redheaded guys on this attic screaming for John Cochran? Well, it was the Ryder brothers, George Ryder, former resident uh, of Brightwaters, long time resident, family here for years and years. But they, they started communicating back and forth with a big bullhorn, horn, uh, just talking about Brightwaters and, and, and being back in Bayshore at schools and spreading stories. So these scripts all have a story. My story is, you know, I, I got in the Navy in 82, was on the battleship in Jersey, my first ship. So I'm the last of the battleship sailors. Um, but my story is about the men and women I get to serve with in all services. And I have to say, any Marines in the audience, I'll speak real slow. Any Marines? <coughs> so, so my last few uh, a year in the desert, um, I was with 3,000 Army personnel from Boston. Uh, we had the Air Force there, uh, which was part of the uh, uh, helping move their medevac. We had the Merchant Marines, uh, thank God for the Merchant Marines. Of course, the Marines, and I had a small contingency of sailors. I was a senior officer in northern Kuwait and southern Iraq uh, during the surge. So my brick was up when I see global war of terrorism. That's what I served on. I served from Baghdad, I was in Beirut to Baghdad. I was in Beirut in 1983, all the way to Baghdad in uh, 2008. So all these bricks, when you walk around, there's a story. And hopefully you see one of the vets that names on there. And that's because one thing we like the veterans. We like to say maybe these stories. We've all had the experience of going to a boot camp. We've gone to uh, a different command. I don't care if it's a R for the Marines or Air Force being you know, one of the uh, many uh, air divisions that they're at. Um, it, it's just a pleasure when you get to sit there and listen to and experience what a veteran has done for this great nation. So I'm honored to be here. I'm honored to be amongst the fellow veterans. And, and I can't thank everybody enough for the, the respect we're giving to the veterans and letting the families put their names of the loved ones on these, on these bricks because it's for a life. God bless America. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a very simple bio. I didn't go to Bayshore High School like all these other guys. I didn't serve in the military. I do have some battle scars being the mayor, but the other mayors can attest to that also. But my father in the 50s, he was in the Marines for eight years. And growing up, I'm sorry, I should have started this before. But but growing up, my father always taught us to have deep respect for the military and those who serve. We grew up in the 60s and 70s, and at the time, a lot of the military were not treated properly. But he always taught us, always treat the veterans, 
I always treat your country with great respect, and I, I feel, feel like I do that to this day. But when I think of my father, I think of the West Point motto of duty, honor, and country. The West Point motto isn't just reserved for people who went to West Point. And I know that I know that because my father was a science kid from Ozone Park. He was a high school graduate, served in the military, and he lived that motto every day. So you don't have to go there. It lives in us all every day. Uh, one thing, both with duty, we need duty and duty on our country. Duty is responsibility. Duty is responsibility if you're in the service to your unit to complete your chores to follow your orders. But duty always also is it's a duty to your family, and it's a duty to your community. In honor, we all think we're honorable people, but honor is something that you can't give to yourself. It's something that you must earn, and it must be something that other people must give you. In the country, there's no place I'd rather be right now than, than here with you people today. Our country is the greatest country on the face of this earth. We have our wards, we have our hiccups, but we're always moving forward. To be able to speak after those three speakers who have done so much for this country, it's just, it's just incredible, it's incredible to me. A couple of months ago, we celebrated the 75th anniversary to the end of World War II. When I think of World War II, I think of my father. I think of my father-in-law. My father-in-law was this little Irish skinny little kid, 130 pounds soaking wet. One day he spent sick form in the Bronx with his buddies. A few months later, he's on a Jap he's on a ship being attacked by Japanese, fighting for his life, fighting for his country. When I think of the greatness of this country, I think of my father. My wife's fine too. My father-in-law. Great people. One of the great generals at the time was General Douglas MacArthur. General MacArthur served in uniform for 52 years. In 1951, when he was doing his farewell speech to a joint session of Congress, he said his famous words that I'm sure all you military people know. He said, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. But here in the village of Brightwaters, we don't believe that our soldiers should fade away. Because all you good people who sponsored bricks for your relatives, your neighbors, and your friends, we join together to say that our veterans will be here today, tomorrow, and for generations to come. Our soldiers here are all legal. They're not male, they're not female, they're not rich, they're not poor, they're not black and white. They're not general. They're not captains, they're not privates. Here before us, they're all equal. All equal on their six by nine brick, and we made sure that everyone was the same size. But now today, we've asked our veterans to perform one more duty, to perform one more task. We put them into formation one more time. One more time to create a path. A path on the street, for a monument, for a great flag. And now that they've completed that duty, completed that task, the village of Brightwaters would like to welcome all the veterans to our walkway of honor. Thank you.
This time, we'd like to recognize the village's oldest veteran, 98 years old, William Walcott. Now, if all the veterans could please rise, we'd like to honor them by playing the songs representing each service. So all veterans, please rise. You guys know him, you can sing him.
I mean, go out better. Thank you. In conclusion, again, I want to thank everybody for coming here today. I want to thank Gene Perkle for the TED Talk. I want to thank my wife for putting up with me. But for a final thing, we're asking everybody to please rise for the planning of TAP in remembrance of all those who have left us. So thank you again. Uh, please take your time, take your photos, and uh, again, thank you for coming today. Thank you.